Since the 1950s, the Sea Lamprey Control Center has worked under an international agreement with the Great Lakes Fishery Commission and in close cooperation with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Department towards the delivery of effective sea lamprey control in the Great Lakes. The, the fishery in the Great Lakes was devastated through the uh, uh, 40s and 50s, uh, primarily as a result of uh, uh, sea lamprey predation. Um, the governments of Canada, in response to this devastation, uh, formulated the uh, Great Lakes Fishery Commission in 1955. And the primary duty of the commission was to uh, formulate and develop a, a program to minimize or eradicate sea lampreys from the Great Lakes. Uh, sea lamprey are native to the Atlantic Ocean and they gained access to the Great Lakes through uh, uh, various ship canals that were constructed in the 1800s. Um, they invaded uh, Lake Ontario in the early 1820s, but were prevented from getting to the other Great Lakes by the presence of Niagara Falls. Um, the Welland Canal changed that, um, gave them access to Lake Erie in 1921, and from there they spread rapidly to the other Great Lakes. Um, the problem with sea lampreys is that they're, they're uh, a parasite on fish. Um, they subsist on the, the blood and body fluids of uh, large-bodied fish. Uh, in the Great Lakes, primarily lake trout and salmon, and they're very destructive. Um, on average, a sea lamprey destroys about uh, 18 kilograms or 40 pounds of fish during its parasitic uh, life stage. People don't normally encounter sea lampreys uh, unless they're uh, out fishing for uh, salmon or other species in the St. Mary's River. Um, occasionally, they'll uh, uh, catch a fish that has either a sea lamprey wound which are uh, very characteristic, a round circular uh, a hole in the side of the fish, or they may even find a, a, or a catch a fish with a sea lamprey attached to it. Uh, the St. Mary's River is one of the most productive rivers in the Great Lakes from a sea lamprey control perspective. We currently estimate that there are about uh, a million larvae that uh, make uh, the St. Mary's River home. There are a number of other tributaries around the Sault Ste. Marie area that uh, are very productive from a sea lamprey control perspective and require uh, regular uh, treatment with lamprecytes. These include the, uh, the Goulet River, the, the Batchewana River and the Thessalon River for example. Fisheries and Oceans Canada's Sea Lamprey Control Centre is currently housed inside the Natural Resources Canada's Great Lakes Forest Research Centre in Sault Ste. Marie. Our program has been highly effective. Um, since its implementation, we've reduced the populations by 90% Great Lakes wide. And this has led to the rehabilitation of lake trout in Lake Superior. And we're seeing uh, excellent uh, signs of the same thing going on in Lake Huron currently. And we also protect uh, viable uh, recreational fisheries for uh, Pacific salmon, steelhead, coho, chinook, who are also subject to uh, sea lamprey uh, predation. To find out more information on sea lamprey in the Algoma region, you can call 705-941-3000. For Go On Shaw TV, I'm Greg Seiler.